Studying the spiritual journey of humanity across different epochs is crucial in spiritual science. However, delving into the culture and civilization of ancient Egypt holds even more significance. Exploring the depths of ancient Egyptian spiritual life reveals echoes across time, as mysterious as the iconic sphinx that stands as a testament to their civilization. The mystery deepens when external research pushes back into increasingly remote ages to unravel the culture of later Egyptian times, backed by available physical evidence. According to this research, the zenith of Egyptian culture dates back at least 7,000 years before our era, if not even earlier. This contributes to the present-day fascination with Egyptian culture, yet another reason lies in the profound, albeit mysterious, connection that contemporary individuals sense between this ancient civilization and their own aspirations. The interest in Egyptian culture extends beyond historians and scholars. Even Kepler, a pioneer in early natural science, felt this connection. He spoke of unravelling the mysteries of planetary movements and cosmic space, akin to peering into the sanctuaries of the Egyptians. Kepler believed that his discoveries were, in a way, bringing the sacred knowledge of ancient Egypt into the modern era. This connection was so profound that Kepler envisioned his message resonating more deeply with future generations, acknowledging a renewal of the wisdom from the secret sanctuaries of ancient Egypt, expressed in different terms. Understanding how the ancient Egyptians perceived their culture and their very nature as human beings becomes a source of great interest. Their insights offer a unique lens through which we can comprehend the roots of human civilization and perhaps find relevance in our contemporary pursuits. In Greek tradition, a notable incident has been preserved, shedding light on how Egyptian culture was perceived in ancient times. According to this tradition, an Egyptian sage once conveyed a perspective to Solon, stating that the Greeks were still children. The sage asserted that Greeks lacked ancient traditions and wisdom hoary with age, emphasising that they would remain as children. The true significance of wisdom hoary with age becomes apparent when viewed through the lens of spiritual science, unravelling the essence of Egyptian thought and feeling. Throughout different epochs, Humanity has experienced the unfolding of various forms of consciousness. Our contemporary consciousness, shaped by sensory perception, intellect, reason and scientific thought, hasn't always existed in this form. Consciousness, like the external world, is subject to the laws of evolution. Understanding ancient cultural centres necessitates acknowledging the insights provided by spiritual science, indicating that in ancient times, people possessed a clairvoyant consciousness, distinct from our present intellectual awareness. Contrary to our current waking consciousness and the absence of consciousness during sleep, ancient consciousness was clairvoyant, now preserved atavistically in the dream world. While our dreams may seem chaotic and devoid of meaning, the ancients experienced a clairvoyant picture consciousness, albeit hazy and dreamlike. These pictures didn't relate to the physical world, but rather to the spiritual realm behind it. It's essential to recognise that all forms of clairvoyant consciousness, whether from prehistoric times or acquired through discipline in the present age, operate in pictures, not in the concepts and ideas of outer physical consciousness. These pictures must be connected to the spiritual realities that lie behind the sense realities of the physical world, the captivating images found in mythologies aren't mere fantastical concepts of nature, as contemporary materialistic consciousness may perceive. Instead, these images offer glimpses into an actual vision of the spiritual world. When we explore ancient mythologies and legends, with a genuine appreciation for humanity's spiritual achievements, the seemingly peculiar tales unveil a remarkable connection with cosmic laws surpassing our modern understanding of physics, chemistry and biology. The old mythologies and religious systems carry a note of spiritual reality, transcending the limitations of our current scientific paradigms. Crucially, it's essential to recognise that different cultures constructed their unique worlds of pictures based on their distinct nature, temperament and race. These symbolic realms represented, for each culture, higher forces underlying the apparent external forces of nature. Evolution, 
unfolding over time, witnessed numerous transitional stages between ancient clairvoyant consciousness and the objective consciousness characteristic of modern humans, the once vibrant ancient clairvoyance gradually dimmed and faded away. As clairvoyant powers diminished across diverse cultures, the images presented to those who could still gaze into the spiritual world contained progressively less spiritual force. The higher realms gradually closed their doors until only the lowest stages of spiritual activity remained perceptible to lower forms of clairvoyance. Eventually, for humanity at large, the ancient clairvoyance entirely vanished. Waking consciousness became confined to the physical world and the ideas and conceptions related to physical phenomena. This marked the emergence of our modern scientific understanding. The fading of ancient clairvoyant powers paralleled the development of present-day consciousness, albeit with variations across different cultures. Evidence from ancient times, including insights from recent Egyptian research, aligns with what spiritual science affirms, that the ancient Egyptian people had a distinctive mission. Their purpose was to look back to earlier eras, when their prominent individuals, endowed with remarkable clairvoyant abilities, could peer into the spiritual realms. The people of Egypt preserved a somewhat diminished clairvoyant power, persisting into relatively late times. Up until the last millennia before the Christian era, the later Egyptians possessed an alternate mode of vision, beyond ordinary daily life, allowing them to see into the spiritual world. While the later Egyptians had a limited perception of the spiritual realms, they acknowledged the existence of a lower spiritual world. For them, doubting this vision would be as senseless as doubting that their eyes could perceive the external world. Although their awareness of the spiritual worlds was faint, they recognised that their predecessors in the golden age of Egyptian civilization had delved more profoundly into the spiritual depths. The mysteries of the spiritual worlds were preserved with great piety and reverence, especially by the earlier Egyptians, for thousands of years. The later Egyptians, acknowledging their dimmer perception, felt a connection to an age when their ancestors had peered more deeply into the realms beyond the physical world. The wisdom teachings, conveyed by the Egyptian sage to Solon, were inscribed in magnificent scripts within temples and on columns, testifying to the profound and all-encompassing clairvoyant powers of hoary antiquity. The primal embodiment of this ancient clairvoyant wisdom, revered by the Egyptians, bore the name Hermes. Later, when a messenger emerged with a mission to revive this ancient wisdom, he, in accordance with Egyptian traditions, adopted the name Hermes. His disciples, believing in the revival of the primeval wisdom, referred to him as the Thrice Greatest, or Hermes Trismegistos. Among the Egyptians he was known as Thoth. Understanding this primordial being requires grasping the Egyptian perception of the true mysteries of the cosmos, influenced by the later teachings of Hermes or Thoth. The beliefs passed down from Egyptian times, as evidenced by external sources, may appear peculiar to modern sensibilities. Gods like Osiris and Isis are depicted with forms that aren't entirely human, often combining human bodies with animal heads or merging human and animal features. Intriguing legends abound, including the unique phenomenon of animal worship, particularly the veneration of cats as embodiments of higher beings. Sacred animals were deeply revered, to the extent that cries of lamentation accompanied the death of cats. Furthermore, Egyptians held a profound regard for animals, and there were strict consequences for those who harmed them. In the era of Roman rule, killing a cat could even lead to the death penalty due to the Egyptians' intense reaction. The mysteries of animal worship present a puzzling aspect of Egyptian thought and sentiment. The pyramids, sphinxes and other archaeological findings from ancient Egypt, with their distinct shapes and symbolism, evoke a curious impression on modern observers. To comprehend the life of feeling and ideas among the ancient Egyptians, it's crucial to consider the teachings of Hermes. The legends, especially the more significant ones, were not mere fanciful tales but carriers of deeper wisdom. They aimed to convey, in pictorial form, knowledge of spiritual life laws surpassing those of external nature. Take, for instance, the Egyptian legend of Osiris and Isis, Osiris, 
a benevolent being from primeval times, is portrayed as a guide to humanity, bestowing ancient culture under the wise counsel of Hermes or Thoth. The narrative unfolds with Osiris being pursued and killed by his enemy Typhon, later dismembered and hidden by Typhon. Isis, the devoted sister and spouse of Osiris, tirelessly sought and found his dismembered body, burying the fragments in various locations where temples were subsequently erected. Posthumously, Isis gave birth to Horus, receiving a spiritual ray from Osiris, now dwelling in another world. Horus's mission was to conquer Typhon and, in a sense, restore the dominion of a life flowing from Osiris back into humanity. These legends, far from mere stories, carry profound insights into the spiritual fabric of life, according to ancient Egyptian wisdom. Analyzing a legend like this goes beyond a simple, allegorical or symbolic interpretation. Instead, it serves as a gateway to understanding the entire realm of feelings and perceptions held by the ancient Egyptians. The figures of Osiris and Isis should not be crudely labelled as symbols for the sun and moon, leading to an astronomical interpretation. Such an approach would misguide, implying that the legend merely symbolises celestial occurrences. In truth, we need to immerse ourselves in the sentiments of the ancient Egyptians, grasping their upward gaze towards supersensible, invisible powers underlying the sensory world, represented by the figures of Osiris and Isis. To comprehend what Osiris and Isis signified to the ancient Egyptians, consider this perspective. Behind man, there exists a higher spiritual essence not derived from material existence. This spiritual essence has condensed into human material existence. The true evolution of man stems from a more spiritual existence. Looking into one's own soul reveals a longing for the spiritual, a yearning for the spiritual wellsprings from which one descended. The forces that brought one into existence are still alive within. The highest powers inwardly relate to these primordial Osiris powers, testifying that one was once a super-sensible being dwelling in other worlds of spirit. Despite now having a dim and instinctive life, being compelled to inhabit a physical body for perceiving the physical world, this spiritual being lived a purely spiritual existence in days gone by. The ancient Egyptian perspective on human evolution was characterised by a duality encompassing the Osiris forces and the Isis forces, the Osiris-Isis duality. Consider our current existence. The formation of an idea, like a triangle, requires active thinking, followed by a passive state as the final concept emerges in our soul. In this analogy, the act of thinking, active, is akin to the Osiris principle, a masculine father principle. Osiris, representing activity, fills the soul with thoughts and feelings. The ancient Egyptian contemplated the notion that substances present in human blood or forming bones weren't always confined within the body, but once pervaded cosmic space. Similarly, the Osiris power, now manifesting as the active principle of thought, was formally spread across the spiritual universe, an Osiris power that permeated and interwove with the cosmos, ultimately pouring into human beings. Just as substances in the blood, now part of the human form, once filled the cosmos, the living and weaving Isis powers from the cosmos flow into human thoughts and ideas, this nuanced perspective reflects the ancient Egyptian soul's attitude toward Osiris and Isis, seeing Osiris as the active, masculine principle behind thought and feeling, and Isis as the living, weaving, feminine principle, contributing to the formation of thoughts and ideas in the human mind. The ancient consciousness sought a means to express ideas that transcended the physical existence on Earth, where everything was known to be of the world of space, offering no outer image of the super-sensible world. In their quest for a language or script to convey concepts like the Osiris power is active within me, individuals turned to the script observed in cosmic space by heavenly bodies. They envisioned the super-sensible power of Osiris as the active light proceeding from the sun, moving through space. In contrast, they associated Isis with the moon, reflecting sunlight, akin to the soul being dark without the active principle of thought, waiting for the Osiris power to reflect it back as Isis power. The ancient Egyptians, while using the sun and moon as symbols to represent the activities of the soul, 
understood that there was no arbitrary connection between the radiating light of the sun and the reflecting moon. Instead, they perceived an inner connection with the supersensible forces felt within the soul, drawing an analogy to a clock, while recognising that it doesn't operate by little demons but through mechanical means, the Egyptians acknowledged the spiritual essence behind its mechanism. They viewed the sun and moon as expressions of a cosmic clock, interrelated and dependent upon each other. Although these celestial bodies might seem subject to mechanical laws at first glance, the Egyptians believed that, ultimately, they adhered to the deeper laws perceived in the soul when contemplating the powers of Osiris and Isis, it wasn't just a symbolic association, they felt a profound connection, sensing that their own being was once subject to the mysterious relationship between light and the sun and moon. The Egyptians perceived a relationship akin to that between Osiris and Isis and the sun and moon, extending to the stars, planets and other gods. The positions of the heavenly bodies were seen as images of their super-sensible life or the experiences of ancient seers, Within the expressions of the cosmic clock formed by the great cosmic movements, the Egyptians discerned a portrayal of forces within their own souls. The celestial clock, with its stars' movements and their relation to fixed stars, served as a revelation of underlying spiritual, supersensible forces. These forces not only determined the positions of all stars, but also created a cosmic script expressing supersensible activities. These sentiments regarding the higher world were passed down to the Egyptians through traditions of ancient clairvoyance. They were aware of the existence of this spiritual realm because they still retained the last remnants of ancient clairvoyance. Their perspective was that they descended from the spiritual world into a realm of matter, manifesting in physical phenomena and processes. According to their understanding, they originated from the world of Osiris and Isis, and the qualities within them that aimed for higher perfection emanated from Osiris and Isis. These invisible qualities lived within them as energy and power, while the physical aspect of human existence was considered the vesture of Osiris Isis, derived from external circumstances in the outer world. The ancient Egyptian soul was profoundly shaped by the dominant feeling of primeval wisdom, a concept that permeated every aspect of their inner life. Unlike abstract ideas, this wisdom didn't exist in isolation, but intertwined with thoughts of destiny, moral impulses and happiness. The feeling of kinship with Osiris and Isis, along with the vision of the spiritual world in ancient Egypt, couldn't be separated from these existential considerations. In the Egyptian worldview, the higher self within a person originated from Osiris and Isis, primal sources belonging to the archetypal worlds of bygone golden ages. However, this Osiris-Isis nature became entangled in the forces that condensed outer physical substances into the human body, subjecting it to decay like the outer forces of nature. The legend of Osiris and Isis, therefore, holds an interpretation rooted in the inner life. Osiris, representing the higher power in man spread over cosmic space, succumbs to forces subject to destruction in the realm of human nature. The Osiris power within man becomes fettered by Typhon, enclosed within a form akin to the coffin of the spiritual nature. While the Osiris nature in man disappears from the outer world, the mysterious Isis nature endures. It remains so that, permeated by the power of intellect in future ages, it can return to the wellsprings of man's being. Within every human, there resides a hidden quality, driven to resurrect Osiris. The Isis power within the human soul guides man's inner being, allowing him to strive towards a higher ego, even while remaining in the outer physical world. This hidden ego, concealed within all human powers, seeks to rise to the light of spirit, propelled by the unseen forces of Isis, known as Horus, the earthly son of Osiris who remained in the spiritual worlds, this invisible being represents the human impulse to reach the higher self, the eternal strive for spiritual elevation. The ancient Egyptians contemplated the Osiris origin of man with a certain sadness, acknowledging that the soul retained elements of the Isis power. This Isis power gives birth to Horus, who embodies the impulse to strive towards spiritual heights. 
In these spiritual realms, man reconnects with Osiris, his spiritual origin. Osiris can be approached through two distinct paths, according to Egyptian beliefs. The first involves passing through the portal of death, where, after the stages of preparation, one reaches Osiris in the spiritual world. In this state, the consciousness of kinship with Osiris is awakened, and the individual may be referred to as Osiris after death. The second path to Osiris is through initiation, a process enabling individuals to explore the invisible and supersensible in human nature, embodied by Isis or the Isis power. Everyday knowledge does not penetrate the depths of the soul or reach the Isis power. However, through initiation, one can understand the true ego enveloped in physical matter and delve into the spiritual home of the ego. Ancient Egyptian teachings emphasised the necessity for man to descend into their innermost being, comprehending the physical nature as an expression of the ego. By forcing their way through this physical nature, individuals could behold the outer world and recognise it as the creation of spiritual, supersensible powers in the three kingdoms of nature, stones, plants and animals. When observing man, one must penetrate beyond the outer form to grasp the Isis powers of the soul, Part of the initiation into the Isis mysteries aimed to reveal to individuals how they were enveloped in matter. This process, akin to the experiences at death, unfolded differently but involved passing through the portal of death in actual life. Initiates learned about the transition from physical to superphysical vision, from the physical to the spiritual world, a transition akin to that experienced in actual death. During this descent into their inner being, aspirants discovered how the blood, the physical instrument of the ego, is formed from nature. According to ancient Egyptian thought, the system of nerves served as the physical instrument for the soul activities of feeling, willing and thinking, while the blood served as the instrument of the ego. To understand these instruments, one had to delve into the physical etheric sheaths, the etheric qualities of the soul. Initiates aim to become independent of the forces in their blood, freeing themselves first and then entering into the remarkable processes of their blood. This understanding of higher nature in its physical aspect required the ability to contemplate oneself as an outer object, standing outside one's own being. Initiation developed forces enabling soul powers to have real experiences without relying on physical instruments, similar to how, after death, a spiritual being observes its physical body from outside. In the Isis mysteries, the pupil embarked on a journey into the secrets of their own blood, symbolised by approaching the threshold of death. This initial stage involved beholding the blood as an object, plunging into the sheath that serves as the instrument of the Isis nature. In the sanctuaries of initiation, the pupil encountered two portals, one open and the other closed, representing the entrances beside the heart valves. The open door allowed access to the inner being, while the closed door prevented the bloodstream from taking a wrong path. The subsequent stage of the Isis initiation encompassed trials of fire, air and water. The pupil gained knowledge of the sheaths around the Isis nature, understanding the nature of fire as it courses through the body, the entry of air as oxygen, and the watery aspect within. This knowledge purified the pupil until they reached their Isis nature, marking the point where they truly came to themselves, recognising their spiritual existence beyond the limitations of human faculties tied to the outer world. In the outer world, the physical sun is visible only by day, hidden at night. However, in the spiritual world, initiated individuals can behold the spiritual powers even when the physical eyes are not functioning. The purified initiate, according to the Isis initiation, sees the spiritual beings face to face and can witness the sun at midnight. This symbolises the visibility of primal spiritual powers behind the sun during the darkness, providing a unique perspective accessible to those initiated into the Isis mysteries. In the true Osiris mysteries, individuals delve deeper into the path of the soul, seeking union with the spiritual supersensible power from which they originated. Here, the focus shifted to understanding Osiris, 
and individuals recognised Osiris arising within their souls through the influence of the Isis power. To illustrate the intricate relationship between Isis and Osiris, the ancient Egyptians turned to a celestial script, drawing from the movements of the sun and moon in the heavens, as well as the positions of other starry bodies, especially the zodiac and the planets. In their view, nothing on earth could adequately express the profound experiences of a soul in search of Osiris, with the guiding force of the Isis power within. The starry constellations served as the script that could convey these mysteries. Hermes, also known as Thoth, the esteemed sage of antiquity, was revered by the Egyptians for his profound insight into the connection between man and the cosmos. Hermes expressed this relationship with sublime eloquence, using the language of the stars themselves. Exoterically, the relation of Osiris to Isis was explained to the general populace through legends, while those preparing for initiation received more detailed teachings. These teachings included insights into the light emanating from the sun, its reflection by the moon, and the fascinating processes of lunar phases. The very forms of writing, even the earliest alphabet letters, were derived from the celestial processes, where consonants represented images of the zodiacal constellations at rest, and the relations between vowels and consonants mirrored the connections between the moving planets and the zodiac. The ancient alphabet in this sense was a reflection of the heavens' cosmic elements. The ancient Egyptians held a profound reverence for the great Hermes, believing that he had received teachings directly from the powers of the heavens. In their view, Hermes embodied the deepest aspects of human soul life. Everything in the daily pursuits of humanity, including the application of mathematical sciences, geometry, later learned by Pythagoras from the Egyptians, and land surveying, was traced back to the wisdom imparted by Hermes. He, having observed the processes and phenomena on Earth, revealed that they were reflections of heavenly activities expressed in the celestial script. The wisdom of Hermes, derived from the stellar script, found its way into disciplines such as mathematics and geometry. He taught the Egyptians to discern in the stars the counterparts of earthly events. A crucial application of this knowledge was seen in the prediction of the annual floods of the Nile, which were vital for the agricultural prosperity of Egypt. Sirius, the dog star, played a significant role in this regard. When it became visible in the sign of cancer, the Egyptians knew that the sun would soon enter this sign, heralding the floods that would nourish their land. Sirius, the watcher, was revered for guiding them in cultivating the soil and ensuring the sustenance of their daily lives. The Egyptians attributed their agricultural success and the rhythms of their existence to the insights drawn from the stellar script, a script originally given by Hermes. For the Egyptians, Hermes was not only a teacher of practical knowledge, but also a spiritual guide. He was considered the Great Spirit, who, in ancient traditions, had bestowed the original script of cosmic wisdom. Inspired by the stars, Hermes constructed the alphabet and imparted essential knowledge for physical life, including principles of agriculture and land surveying. Recognising that physical life was but the body of a cosmic spiritual life, the Egyptians understood that Hermes drew his inspiration from this deeper source. Consequently, the name of Hermes became intricately linked with the entire culture and civilization of Egypt, creating an intimate connection between the people and this revered figure. The ancient Egyptians, around 1322 BCE, had a distinctive method of time calculation based on a year of 365 days, divided into 12 months of 30 days each, with an additional five supplementary days. However, this method resulted in a small discrepancy, with the year starting a bit earlier each time. After approximately 1460 years, this cycle brought the heavenly relationships back to their initial positions. The Egyptians associated this cycle with their concept of holy primal wisdom. They believed that during the earliest times of this cycle, humanity possessed the highest clairvoyance. As time progressed through the four stages of the solar year, clairvoyant abilities gradually waned, and by their contemporary era, the Egyptians felt they had only traditions of the ancient teachings. 
looking back through three great cosmic years, they believed in an age when the most profound sages imparted knowledge in areas like writing, mathematics, geometry, land surveying and astronomy. In acknowledging the discrepancy in their human calculations, the Egyptians perceived it as a sign of estrangement from Osiris and Isis. Despite the inaccuracies in their intellectual endeavours, they believed that a hidden world, guided by divine spiritual powers, corrected these discrepancies in the movements of the stars. In the chronology of ancient Egypt, the Egyptians looked beyond the limitations of the intellect to spiritual beings and powers residing in hidden worlds. These beings, according to deeper laws, were believed to supervise, protect and watch over all of humanity's experiences on Earth. Hermes, or Thoth, held a special place in their reverence. Beyond being a great teacher, Hermes was seen as a being whose inspiration flowed from the watchful powers of heaven. The ancient Egyptians expressed deep gratitude and reverence towards Hermes, acknowledging him as the source of their blessings and wisdom. In their eyes, Hermes was present in days of old, and through messengers his blessings continued to flow into the world for the healing of humanity. This reverence extended not only to Hermes, but also to Osiris, the original source of power. The Egyptians, especially in ancient times, were permeated with a profound moral feeling, characterised by reverence and gratitude. The wisdom of the Egyptians was intimately intertwined with religious sentiment, reflecting a holistic connection between human knowledge, piety and science. In the later epochs of Egyptian civilization, this pure form of spiritual reverence began to diminish as the culture entered a period of decadence. The Egyptians were deeply aware that different epochs and civilizations had distinct missions in expressing the spiritual in diverse forms. However, as civilizations reached their zenith, they inevitably faced a decline. Much of what has been preserved from ancient Egyptian culture belongs to the later, declining periods, making it challenging to fully grasp the pure essence of their earlier wisdom. Notably, the Egyptians understood that the age when wisdom itself was active was preceded by an epoch when all beings, not just humans, descended from divine spiritual heights. To comprehend the innermost nature of humanity, the Egyptians delved beyond external appearances and penetrated the inner being. External forms, they believed, reflected stationary stages of primordial creation visible in the three kingdoms of nature. The pyramids represented the mineral and stone world, the lotus flower symbolised the plant kingdom, and animal forms scattered along the path to man embodied divine forces at earlier stages of development. The Egyptians felt a connection to primeval ages, when all creation emerged from divine powers, recognising that these forces had remained in earlier stages within the beings of the lower kingdoms of nature before ascending to human form. It is crucial to understand the consciousness and feelings of the ancient Egyptians to grasp the moral effect of their wisdom on their souls. The conception of the divine world and supersensible forces influenced their relationship with animals, although this relationship took on a more distorted form during the decline of Egyptian culture. Primitive and simple conditions should not be ascribed to the early stages of civilizations. Instead, such conditions are a consequence of the decadence that sets in after the loss of original spiritual treasures. The assertion that all civilizations originated from old primitive conditions akin to those observed in present-day savage tribes might provoke consternation in scientific circles. However, according to spiritual science, civilizations in their infancy were directly inspired by spiritual beings standing behind external history suggesting a profound connection between early civilizations and the spiritual world. A notable work by Alfred Jeremias, The Influence of Babylon on the Understanding of the Old Testament, sheds light on a perspective that aligns with spiritual science. Jeremias argues that ancient cultures, particularly those of the Euphratian civilizations, were imbued with sublime and far-reaching conceptions. 
The records and cultural life of these civilizations indicate the presence of scientific and religious ideas, not only in the secret wisdom of temples, but also in the regulation of state organization, the declaration of justice, and the administration and protection of property. As we delve deeper into ancient times, the dominance of these conceptions becomes more apparent, only waning when the Euphratian culture enters its period of decadence, giving rise to what is often labelled as barbaric civilizations. External scientific research is beginning to converge with the insights of spiritual science, challenging the prevailing notion of primitive conditions at the genesis of human civilizations. Instead, attention is drawn to the influence of great individualities, mighty figures such as Zarathustra and Hermes, these individuals appear sublime because they were instrumental in imparting significant spiritual impulses to humanity during the distant ages spoken of by sages like Solon. In contemplating these great individualities, including Hermes, a profound sense of strength and empowerment arises. They stand as guides of humanity, having bestowed the greatest blessings across various cultural domains to those who possess the power of clairvoyance, Looking back at these figures, there is a recognition that the spirit not only resides in the cosmos, but actively influences cosmic events and the evolution of humanity. The acknowledgement of these spiritual influences fortifies our own lives, instilling greater confidence in our actions and strengthening our hopes and purposes. Born in later ages, we gaze up to these great individualities, seeking fulfilment in their mighty powers of soul and understanding our own actions in the light of the eternal spirit flowing into humanity through them. And that's a wrap for today's learning journey. Thank you so much for joining us and experiencing all the excitement. If you had as much fun as we did, don't forget to give that like button a big thumbs up and subscribe.